This conference will now be recorded. Well, thank you all for joining me for this uh, virtual uh, business networking meeting. Uh, we have a very nice crowd today. Um, what I'm going to do is this, um, some of you have not been to the physical meetings, but basically this is trying to uh, do the equivalent of the physical meeting uh, virtually through the computer because, of course, you know, we have all these uh, stay-at-home orders with the coronavirus, but we're going to kind of follow the same format. So we're going to start by, uh, I'm going to mute everybody, and then I'm going to mute unmute every person one at a time to do a round of introductions in the same order that I show you on the system here. Um, and then after we get through a round of introductions, please take about a minute to uh, introduce yourself, your company, your product or service, uh, maybe who would be um, an ideal client for you so the other people in the group as they go about their daily business can can keep an eye out for you and, and refer you a, a client if, if they see a good fit. Um, and then after we do that whole round of introductions, um, I'm just going to unmute everybody and open it up for everybody. And hopefully uh, the introductions may have triggered some questions on your mind or, or some discussion that we can engage in. Um, and then as a third and, and final step is just to have a general business conversation, any topics that you want to talk about. If you want to talk about the coronavirus, that's fine. Although I think we're getting more than our fair share in the news. Um, but, you know, any any topic is, is, is open for discussion that's business related. Um, and then hopefully we can close this out somewhere between 2.45 and 3, uh, depending on how the conversation goes. So I hope that makes a lot of sense for everybody. Um, let's see. Barbara, you're the first on my list. So if you could please unmute yourself from your side and uh, do a quick introduction of yourself to the group. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara Klein. I'm the love coach. I own a business called The Best You Dating and Life Coaching. And I work with singles who are either struggling with online dating and or afraid of online dating. And um, I love helping people discover their unique gifts um, and to experience their growth and results. Excellent. Thank you. And by the way, let me just mention real quick a, a plug. We recently did um, the Empress of Biz, Joanne Forrester and I recently did an interview with Barbara Klein. Um, so if you want to see that interview, it's basically in the same uh, YouTube channel that I'm going to post um, uh, this uh, virtual activity today. So feel free to take a look at that. Uh, we also did one with Dolph a while back, which I thought was incredibly interesting. So same thing, if you look through the list a little bit further back, you'll, you'll see one that we did with Dolph. Um, Deidre, you're next. Um, I know, I believe you're you're in Virginia, so thank you very much for uh, joining us from Virginia. I think that is one of the exciting things about taking this virtual. You know, most of the folks are from Pittsburgh or the Pittsburgh area, a little bit of West Virginia, Ohio. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us all the way from um, Virginia and. Uh, same thing, if you could introduce yourself to the group and talk about your product or service and, and maybe some clients that, that people could refer out to you in, in Virginia from this area, if, if that's a good fit. Sure. I'm Deidre Victoria. I live in Richmond, Virginia, which is the capital of Virginia. Um, I am a virtual transaction coordinator. So I work with realtors and I help them with their transactions. I also help design online courses and I hire in-house administrative assistants. So as far as clients, um, I would be looking for realtors. Um, I would be looking for someone who um, is an expert at something and wants to teach it and create a course. And um, 
another client would be a brick and mortar business that uh, wants to hire a in-house administrative assistant. So that um, that is the type of clients I would be looking for. Okay, so just to be clear real quick, the first couple of things that you mentioned, you can do virtually with anybody that's willing to do it, email, phone, video conference, and in the whole US, correct? Yes, actually all three can be done virtually, um, even hiring administrative assistants. You know, we I can interview via Zoom um, and give my recommendation on who they should hire. So all can be done virtually. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, Dolph, you're next on my list. If you want to introduce yourself and uh, kind of the same thing, who might be a, a good client or a good business relationship <laughs> for you? Why, sure. Well, I'm Dolph Santorin. I'm in Wheeling, West Virginia. And uh, obviously, I'm on not only on my cell phone, but I'm enjoying the wonderful weather, which is probably why my glasses have gone completely dark. Um, uh, come out of the technology sector, spent half of my career in technology, the other half in manufacturing, and uh, kind of my retirement gig has been taking on projects where I can end up adding value and helping companies either get back on track or uh, rise to where they need to end up being. So uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm occasionally helping either one or two of my our four adult children with their independent projects at this point in time. And that's part of what I'm doing now. And as you can end up seeing here, I'm missing my barber. <laughs> uh, and, and Barb, it's good to see you again. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. Oh, next on the list is Jennifer, but I think she walked away for a second. Jennifer, are you there? Nope, no worries. We'll come back to her. Kristen, um, we're going through a round of introductions. Um, I just unmuted you from my side. So um, if you could please unmute yourself and, and then tell the rest of the folks here, um, basically introduce yourself, your, your product or service, who might be a good referral for you. I think you're also out of state, which again is, is really cool for, for this video conference. Um, so you, you know, you may want to mention, um, you know, where you're at and, and if, if the things that you're going to talk about can be done virtually, um, mention that too, for the folks here. Sure. Thank you so much. And it's good to be here. I've been trying to attend more networking events and this is just one that kind of came across my plate. So, um, I'm Kristen and I'm in Indianapolis, kind of in the downtown area. Um, I don't know if anyone's been, but so haven't spent much time downtown. Everyone is working from home now, right now. So, and I work for a company called iLab and iLab specializes in independent software quality assurance and testing services. So it's very niche market, um, but we do not discriminate on the type of industry that we are looking to help. So if you are an organization who invests in software, if you have a team that develops your own software, if you're looking to purchase software, whether it be um, commercial off the shelf software or, or COTS um, software is what people like to call it in this industry. I come from the healthcare space, so I'm still learning the lingo, but um, so COTS software, which is similar to uh, salesforce.com is a one of the more common ones where organizations will purchase CRM packages from Salesforce and integrate it to their business. So what we do is we work on behalf of the customer who's purchasing the software and we do all the testing, the integration testing to make sure that it functions the way that it should. So that's just one example of what we do. And we provide a full scope end-to-end -end testing solution. So we test the path all the way from the beginning to the end to the client facing solution. And so some of our main customers are organizations who are investing in their software. 
Um, it doesn't necessarily matter on the size. We work with smaller projects. We do some consulting here and there. Um, some of the, the consulting that we do can be on a project lasting one or two months. Or we have, um, we also do staff augmentation. So some of our iLab staff can get plucked out and put into your organization for a long term. So, yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, and by the way, just so you know, um, after we're done with the round of introductions, I'm going to open it up so that if you have questions for anybody else or anybody else, else has questions for you, it's, it's a little bit more of a free form uh, discussion. And, and then after that, we'll just completely open it up for any business topic that, that anybody wants to talk about. Um, Jennifer, I'm going to backtrack to you because um, you were on my list, but, but you were away. But if you could please uh, introduce, unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm sorry about that. My pharmacy called. You know how, how hard they are to get hold of. Um, currently, I own and operate Genlau Agency. I do um, marketing, coaching, and consulting. My big project right now is economic development in Tifton, Georgia. We're doing a big nonprofit capital campaign and um, trying to start a trade school. So um, it's kind of hard making progress with all the quarantines going on, but keep trying to do what I can do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see who else is next here on my list. Oh. Phyllis, you're next on my list, and I think we can see you and hear you. Yes. Thank you, Sal, for inviting me. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Phyllis, and I am the Regional Sales Manager for Wholesale Payments Incorporated. We're a local merchant service company here in Pittsburgh and serving businesses nationwide. We have a lot of really great programs right now that with the coronavirus, everybody's hurting, and we have an opportunity to put cash back into your pocket. Um, we offer a lot of different programs, but one big program that we're offering now is the cash discount program. And with this program, um, it's a flat $45 a month. You pay zero processing fees and zero transaction fees. And uh, legislation's been passed where it now allows the business owner to pass along the fees to the customer. So um, with that being said, it's, it's saving um, merchants thousands of dollars every month. They get an instant raise. So if I give you my credit card for, say, $100, my credit card as the customer will be charged $103.50. The merchant pays zero. So it's just almost like going to the ATM. It's a convenience fee, and it's a really great uh, program for your merchants to start with that now and save hundreds of thousands of dollars every year in processing. Plus, we have a lot of other programs, business to business pro uh, processing that takes almost a percent off of processing if you're, you know, selling business to business. So we have a lot of great programs to help the business owner out there. Okay, perfect. And Russ, I see you just came on and I just unmuted you, so you're next on my list. Um, if you could please introduce yourself to, to the group and talk a little bit about what a good uh, client would be for you. <laughs> hey, Sal, thanks so much. Uh, I, I apologize. I was just, just trying to uh, get a little uh, something off of my shirt here. Um, my name is Russ York. Um, with Liberty Insurance Agency. Uh, we are a, a locally owned and operated, uh, commercially focused insurance uh, brokerage here in Pittsburgh. Uh, good customer for me. Um, any business that uh, has a fleet or some commercial automobiles, uh, that, uh, that that's a really tough market. It's getting very hard right now. Uh, anyone who has some concerns uh, on their cyber policy, everyone ought to be uh, taking a quick look through their cyber policies right now um, looking for exclusions. Um, hacking activity is at an all-time high. Um, those bad actors tend to take advantage of the situations that we're currently in, so uh, that's something to, to take a look at. Um, also, anyone in the construction realm, um, general contractors, subcontractors, artists and trades, um, we have a, a specialized team 
that focuses on their specific type of risk. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you guys uh, so much for uh, setting up this call. Thanks, Sal. Absolutely. And by the way, I have a homework to call you, so I will call you later today or tomorrow. Uh, Joanne Forrester, who's kind of my co-host on, uh, on the business show we interview people, wants to do an interview to specifically talk about the policies for, for cyber crime and, and hacking and things like that. So if, if you'd like to participate and, and be interviewed, I'll, I'll be calling you and we'll, we'll try to figure that out. I'd love to help. Thanks. And Bill, I don't know why the system put you last on my list, but certainly not least. Um, if you could please um, introduce yourself and, and talk about what a good client would be for you or a good referral. Oh, sorry, we can't hear you. Uh-oh, I think Bill's having technical difficulties there. Oh, Bill, we can't hear you. Okay, sorry about that. All right, well, we'll just go on to the if you can if you can fix it, we'll we'll let you come back and uh, and and inter, uh, introduce yourself on any point. Um, all right, I've just opened it up for for everybody's unmuted at least from my side. Um, does anybody have any questions for anybody based on uh, the introductions that they heard? Well, I was going to ask Deidre how we can get a hold of her. Sure. Um, I can give you, I'm not sure if there's a chat where I can put my contact. Yes, there is. Um, and I'm going to make that suggestion for everybody because I've done that in the past. Uh, there's a little chat dialogue there. If you put in whatever you want, your website, your email, your phone number, um, that chat log gets stored automatically, and then after this meeting, I just <laughs> everybody. So, so Deidre, if you want to put in, like I said, whatever you want to put in, your your uh, your name, your email, your phone, your website, LinkedIn uh, profile, whatever you want to put on there. Okay, I will put it in the chat. Perfect. And Phyllis, same for you, and same for everybody. Okay. And, uh, okay, any questions, anybody for anybody? Yeah, Deidre, do you deal with um, wholesale real estate at all? No, I, I mean, I can, but mostly residential. Are you licensed? I'm not licensed. Oh, okay. I'm working on my PA license. Oh, okay. Okay. Um... All right. Does anybody want to ask anything of anybody else or Phyllis, I'm going to ask you one because I know this might come in handy with this coronavirus and then we'll open it up for just a, a completely general discussion. Okay. Um, I know you have a program or you used to have a program where if people need a loan, you can give them money and you can give them a loan very quickly. And then basically what you do is, as, as they process credit cards, you know, when, when they're back open again, um, you, you take a percentage of the swipes and, and that's how you repay back the loan. Could you talk a little bit about that real quick? Because I think that's going to come in handy for a lot of people, quite honestly. Okay, great. Yes, that was one of the items on my list to talk to you about. Um, we have a cash advance, and um, to qualify, you would just need three months merchant statements and three months bank statements. And we can get you up to $250,000 in 48 hours which is really awesome. So they would, uh, once that application leaves my hands, then it goes into this pool of lenders and all these lenders will come up with the percentage of what you would pay. So it could be like say 23% of your total batch of the day. It could be set up for three times a week, every day, depends on how fast you wanna pay it back and how much you wanna pay per day. So there's a lot of options in this program, which is works really well for the merchant if they're having a hard time getting a loan right now. But we do it all throughout the year. It's a great, great program. They What happens is they take it right out of the batch of the day. They set up a lockbox and they take the percentage out and then they put your money into your bank account. 
So it's very easy. You never get a bill. You don't have to do anything. It's very seamless. So let me ask you a quick question. Let's assume I'm a restaurant and I'm either completely shut down because I don't have delivery or takeout or I'm, you know, I'm doing delivery and takeout, but still that's less business than I normally do. Can I still apply to that program? Can I still get money now? And can I, and then I start to repay it once I open up again and, and, and the restaurant goes back to normal? Yes, you can apply now because how it works is what we need to do is just fill out the application. Even if you're not working right now, we'll fill out the application. We'll send it into the lenders and it would not start until you started back up. But the money would be there. But the paying the, the uh, process would not start as far as repaying the loan until you would be patching your machine out on a daily basis. But, they okay. would but I wouldn't get the money till I open up again also, right? That's correct. Yes. I wouldn't get the money now. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. That, that, that's fair. That makes sense. Three months bank statements and three months merchant statements. And that's all you need to apply in a short little application. Okay. Perfect. Hey, and Russ, I have a question for you. And, and, and again, anybody else feel, feel free to jump in. But it's just because this, this came up in conversation the other day. Let's say my computer system gets hacked and I have whatever, let's say 10,000 email addresses of, of prior clients, people that have put their email in, in, the, in the website and so on and so forth. And, and I've lost them. It's not that they, they took a copy, you know, somehow they, they deleted them. I've, I've lost my 10,000 email addresses for 10,000 customers that I used to market to them, maybe send them a loose letter or something. How do you value that for purposes of, of a claim? Uh, that's that's a bit tough. Um, you'd have to look at it uh, like on a per record basis, um, and and the the endorsement that would might cover that uh, valuable records would probably fall into. Um, you probably have a, a relatively low limit on something like that, maybe twenty five hundred to five thousand uh, for valuable records. Um, so a, a lot of times with those little endorsements that they kind of package together, um, you know, the, the carrier again, and you know, I'm the messenger here, I'm not the carrier in all <laughs> honesty would probably just say, okay, what's the limit of coverage? We're going to give you the check for the limit of coverage. Okay. So if I was a sort of a mid-size organization, like I know some mid-size organizations that have. 30,000 email addresses of, of people, basically it would be whatever that pre-established limit is, 2,500, 5,000, it would have, um, it wouldn't be any bigger by the fact that I've got 30,000 instead of 1,000 email addresses. No, not unless you, uh, for some reason, would, would schedule that, meaning you would specifically make that a line item in your policy to say this, this database of and, and I mean, in the world of databases, thirty thousand is still tiny. Um, you know, considering some databases are into the seven and eight figures, um, you would say uh, this database. We want to make sure that this information is uh, valued at such and such. You, you'd come up with a, an agreed value um, between yourself and back and forth between the carrier. Um, you might have to show some. Uh, maybe sales data or uh, whatnot to say, this is what this is worth um, to prove to them that it's worth the risk. Right. And that's a good point. And I know, by the way, that happens a lot if you have like uh, very specialized assets, even on the, at the residential level that you're insuring, like a, like a jewelry, a fine watch, a painting, a wine or something. You want to make sure that when, when nothing has happened, you're you're letting your insurance guy know, hey, listen, I got a wine collection here that's worth a hundred thousand dollars, and here's a list of my bottles. So I, if I'm understanding, this is kind of a similar situation. Before anything happens, you want to be telling him, hey, look, I got a list of thirty thousand email addresses that are very valuable for me, and and let's agree that it's worth this much. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I have a question right. for you. Anybody Matt? have anything for anybody? I have a question for us. 
please. Um, so I actually have been connecting with a lot of insurance companies because my background is in insurance. So I have a lot of contacts in that space. And one of the things that I noticed about different life insurance companies and auto insurance and definitely cybersecurity insurance as well is that right now these companies are being impacted a lot by different regulations that are coming through the door really quickly as well as they're making changes to their policy to kind of get a, get in front and help the customer like waiving deductibles, waiving co-payments and things like that. I was curious what if, if you guys are doing anything like that. So, we, you know, we're a broker. Um, we, we represent the carrier community. I have about 60 carriers that I have direct writing authority with and probably 200 wholesalers. Um, the carrier community, some have come out and just issued blanket statements. Um, most recently, a lot of them with auto policies and um, selective, which is a, is a big one, uh, extended that into their commercial auto. Um, all states, Liberty Mutual, uh, Nationwide, Progressive have all issued statements saying that they were going to refund between 15 and maybe 30, 35 percent of their auto premiums across the board. Um, a lot of the commercial carriers have um, issued blanket statements saying they're offering 30 or 60, some once one I heard of was, was 90 days grace on premium payments. Uh, the others, um, we have made it a point to reach out to our customer base to say, you know, if, if there's going to be an issue with a premium payment, let's have a conversation with, you know, the customer with us, with the underwriters from that insurance carrier to work out a program. Um, and, do, and, you, do you have a, um, do you have an online quoting portal? Do you have utilize an API to connect to the carriers or how do you go about quoting and issuing those products? So we, we utilize an agency management um, software program uh, that allows us, um, I believe it's through API, uh, to uh, so a lot of a lot of items can be quoted online. These are typically maybe your smaller policies. Um, you know, maybe a, a, an HVAC contractor with you know two or three automobiles and a staff of five or six. Um, we can go directly online, fill out the applications, um, and uh, get a quote uh, through that. More complex applications require um, a, a hefty stack of forms to get filled out, conversations uh, back and forth with underwriters, um, you know, with with the prospect as well. So um, that's, that's kind of, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, so I guess um, if it's okay, would you mind if I reached out to you and maybe you could help me connect to possibly your IT team to ask questions and maybe connect with them? Yeah, sure. Please do. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. You both put your contact information in the, in the chat log, right? I, I put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. And Christian, I think you did too, cause I kind of see it as it goes by. Okay. Perfect. Um, Anybody have any questions for anybody else? Well, I just wanted to ask, because um, I'm looking to make connections with realtors. So I don't know if anyone knows any realtors that may need a transaction coordinator. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Does anybody know if there's like an associate, like an, I mean, an association or, or something? I mean, I know you probably go to like a database like realtor.com. In just Pennsylvania, say, oh. you're only allowed to use the realtor firm. You're not allowed to use an independent transaction broker. Okay. Oh. So, I know, uh, so while I know a bunch in Pennsylvania, I know at Florida the same way because I might have to get licensed in Florida too. Um, I think New York is too. I, I don't know anything about Virginia or Ohio, but I know in Pennsylvania, it all has to run through the broker. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting point. Okay. 
All right. Anything else? Going once. Going twice. Oh, let me mention this. Um, we are going to do another one, and I, I need to call you, Barb, to, to coordinate this because I know you signed up for for. I had on the database one for a week from now, but quite honestly, I'm going to try to do them every two weeks. Um, so we're going to do another one of these in, in two weeks from now. Um, if anybody is interested um, in joining us again, and hopefully, my hope is that once we are allowed to do the the physical meetings, that once uh, a month we'll do the, the physical lunch meeting over at the Cannon's Chop House, and then maybe two weeks offset from that, we'll, we'll do a virtual meeting and kind of keep it flip-flopping like that so that even if you can't make the physical meeting and some, you know, in the case of Deidre, for example, out there in Virginia, she can still join us for the virtual ones once a month. And, and people that even if they join the physical meeting want to have a little bit more contact and, and keep things going. So... All right. Well, unless anybody has anything, um, I'm going to shut this down. Thank you all for participating. Uh, hopefully, we've made some good business connections. And uh, hopefully, I can see a lot of you uh, two weeks from now or four weeks from now. Okay, so thank you. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. For thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sal. Thanks, everyone. You betcha. Take care. Thank you all.